We got our new slabber mill up and running this week. I've been working on this for about uh, probably five months now. And it could do about seven foot in diameter and about 26 feet long. It's uh, entirely electric. And there's the control panel. And there's the electrical box. So these has the variable frequency drive displays on here. Uh, variable frequency drives <clears throat> convert single phase power to three phase and they also give you uh, control over the speed and ramp up ramp down and braking of the motor um, and they allow you to control the motor with these low amperage switches and potentiometers um, which is really handy you can pr program them to do a ton of different things so this variable frequency drive runs the 15 horsepower motor that runs the chain this variable frequency drive runs the forward and back. This one does the up and down. And these are braking resistors that uh, allow the, the motors to brake and slow down quickly, uh, particularly in the case of an emergency, but also um, just to come to a quick stop when you're trying to set your height. Uh, these are the uh, breakers and relays, these emergency stop relays and uh, temperature overload relays. That's the main switch here, and this is your intake fan, which is filtered, outlet, and temperature probe. So, if the cabinet goes over 100 degrees in temperature, which is what the variable frequency drive is rated for, it will automatically shut down all of the controls, uh, same as it would if you hit the emergency stop, except it won't activate the braking relays because you don't want the additional heat if you're already over temperature. So, uh, you can see it's very nice to have it quiet when you're running it and positioning it. So this, re this uh, potentiometer here allows me to control the speed, dial it right in to where I want it particularly handy in forward and back so you can set your cut speed right exactly where you want it. See I can slow that right down to just about nothing. So this is our drive system, <clears throat> three horsepower, three phase motor into a gearbox, Lovejoy coupler, and then that is actually a Subaru differential, uh, which means that you're putting an even amount of torque to each drivetrain, so it's pulling evenly on the carriage at all times, which is really nice. The drive chain then hooks into this little bracket. Um, which we you know, have it hooked on with quarter inch bolts so that it will hopefully snap off before it uh, destroys something if we happen to hit the end of the carriage or uh, something unforeseen happens. Also, eventually I'm planning on putting a uh, planer head on it, which means that I can disconnect this off of here, hook it onto the planer head, and then use the same drive system to drive the planer head back and forth. Uh, it's a <coughs> relatively simple system. This is your bar, your chain is a hyper skip or super skip chain. Uh, there's about 12 inches in between the teeth there. Um, this is your tension. So you just tighten, turn this, tighten this down. This whole plate moves back and forth. And then it's got the bearing blocks, shaft, and sprocket down here. This can tilt this way and this way so that you can get that shaft perfectly perpendicular to the bar. Go ahead and start this up real quick, see it run.
blade speed ends up being about 6,000 feet per minute. Um, this is the height gauge, pretty simple and convenient. So you can see right there, we're about the 26 and 5 16 inches high off the deck. Over here, we've got the same pillow block bearings, shaft, and sprocket, just with a um, belt attached to it. This is not quite cutting it. We're going to bump that up to a three belt soon as it comes in. Um, the bar will actually sag in the middle because it's so long, so that's why we have these on here. Uh, that uh, stays on if I'm doing something narrow. However, if I have to use the full width of the blade, I will start it into the cut and then pull these magnets off. You can see, they just pop right off. So reattach them. So there's to it, keeps it nice and flat. That's our oil tank, which feeds the oil into the bar. And these are just simple V-groove pulleys to hold this whole carriage up and in, in place as it goes up and down. Um, this is our height adjustment, left to right, so you can take that and just screw them in or out a little bit to make sure that it's perfectly even on each side. Um, also, these wheels have um, some slide in them so that you can get the uh, blade perfectly parallel with the deck. Here's a little V-block. Keeps your V-groove wheels nice and clean. Keeps them from running over sawdust and, and uh, getting clogged up. And then there's some pockets in the back here that... We can put this bar in, which is removable, to keep the um, logs from rolling through the back of our building. There's a 55-gallon drum of chain and cable lube. And as you can see, we haven't gotten the building done yet. We've been pretty desperate to get some of these white logs done before the it gets too hot out, and they will spoil pretty soon here. So. We're getting it up and running just in time. So that's the new mill. And uh, there's the, the old mill, which uh, does all the grade lumber, anything under 36 inches. We can cut on that. It's much quicker, but um, has its limits. So we decided to build this one as well.